Hello, welcome to my text analysis video. My name is Anaga and I'm here to talk about a beautiful text by Dr. Ahmar Mahboud. He's a professor from the University of Sydney and he came here to visit St. Andrews as a visiting scholar. And he presented a presentation about subaltern practice in 2023. It's interesting and he showed a beautiful poem at the end of his presentation. The first thing I would like to discuss in this presentation is the genre, audience, and the purpose of the text. I use SFL framework and meta function to critically analyze the text. Let's talk about the three variable. Although these frameworks were developed separately, but it is clear that there is a close connection between them and they correspond reasonably well by combining them. We have an approach to analyzing the academic text that reveal information about language and language choices. And speaking of genre, the text is clearly a poem and it is a philosophical one about language. Audience, people who work in academia, such as academic schooler, linguist, PhD or postgraduate student. And the purpose is, this is a beautiful poem that reflects on the power of language and its impact on our cultures as human beings. The, the poem also laments the loss of traditional language and knowledge in the face of colonialism and also globalization. So it relates to the writer's uh, background. It has the negative consequences uh, that result from these changes and the impact of modern technology to uh, traditional languages. So the thinner, um, the text is it's good example of interpersonal. The relationship between the reader writer is a unique one. I say unique because um, not everybody can relate to what he's uh, feeling. Because, uh, for example, the native English speakers may not feel the same as the non-native English speaker who who read this poem. They might feel that this is something that um, offensive because. Um, in this scenario, are we really the bad guy or the villain because we ruined uh, the traditional language in other countries, for example? So the relationship is quite uh, in intriguing. For someone who speaks uh, English as their second language, I, I feel I can relate to uh, Sunny Boy's intention through this uh, poem, but other people may not feel the same. Thematic knowledge, the picture was actually shown first before the poem. When we see that sign, we, we know that uh, we, we were scared to do or to enter that room. And it was also the same feeling that he, he felt. We share the, the same knowledge that um, it's a forbidden for us to to proceed to, to that uh, area. So the, the use of Bali, the, the foreign language, this is uh, Urdu, and this meant actually uh, utterance or speech. So this, uh, foreign language also emphasize where he's from. This poem uh, used the formal language because no slang or abbreviation. So this mode allows for a high degree of formal structure and the poet takes advantage of this to create a complex text with a clear beginning, middle, and until the end of the, the, the poem. Cohesive device, grammar metaphor. Uh, the last stanza of the poem contains the passive voice in a sentence. Here, the subject of the sentence, our tradition is receiving the action, slaughtered. Rather than performing the action, this can create a sense of powerless and help or helplessness, which aligns with the theme of language being powerful force that can shape the world around us in ways that are beyond our control. Active and passive voice. Using the passive voice, the poet uh, emphasizes the sense of loss and destruction that has occurred as a result of erosion of traditional culture practices. In here, we can see we have four stanzas, the writer names and the lines. Uh, we have 21 lines overall. The relationship between language choice and context. To understand more about this poem, we need to look at the background of the, write, the writer and try to dig a little bit deeper into his uh, intention for this poem. This poem was written by Sunny Boy. He is keenly interested in the application of socio-semiotics in real-world context. And when he did a presentation about subaltern practice in IE, he talked about his early life and he stated again that I'm a child of this diaspora, I'm a model product of the post-colonial world. So this has been explained that uh, he wrote this poem because he wanted to let the readers know that the text focused on the idea that the loss of traditional language and cultural knowledge has resulted in negative consequences for humanity, such as greed, the decline of wisdom, and the loss of tradition and integrity. Then it reflects on how the language is a harmonious system that mutually adapt and influence with the world with people who live in it. That's why in the first stanza, days, like computer languages, program machines, human language program people, and while we do other, while we do have other senses, language can shape how we use those two. 
So the text highlights the idea that language is not just a means of communication, but it has a profound impact on how we think, feel, and interact with the world around us. Let's move on to pattern of text. We have uh, specific noun senses, synonym cuts, louder, murder, and matching relations, repetition, and parallelism. In the third stanza, we see that the unspecific noun senses is intended to raise expectation to the five senses, such as smell or touch. Expectations are not fulfilled right away. The writer provides a little context of the senses in the third stanza. The synonym, cut, slaughter, and murder, that says all that changed when our tongue was cut, our tradition slaughtered by trends and fates, our integrity murdered with greed and wants. So this is really tragic. Matching relations. Now we are going to talk about repetition and parallelism. The first one is simple repetition. We we see there the our our language and pronouns language change into she and unspecific non senses those. So repetition actually helps to create a sense of rhythm. It features strong emotive language, including metaphors such as our integrity murder with greed and want. And our, and our humanity turned into an infectious wound, which adds to the overall impact and meaning of the poem itself. Parallelism. So, same structure. Each of these lines relies the claim counter pattern. So, both sides of the argument. Look at the phrase on sixth line from the second stanza. It is mentioned again in the third in the thirteenth line that it has similar meaning that illustrate the world of planet Earth we are living in. Again, um, Sunnybo is interested in real-world context. We focus on language studies on linguists. The bias is that this word reinforces and theorizes some alternative ways of how we make and communicate our understandings of the world. And in the third stanza, each time each item in the list is structured similarly using two parts. They are parallel in syntax and meaning. This creates a sense of balance and rhythm in the poem in the poem and emphasizes the idea that language can shape our experiences and perceptions and perceptions in many different ways through senses. All right, now we're going to talk about grammatical metaphor, theme and rhyme. So in the first um, stanza, we see the theme, language, and rhyme can shape how we use those two about how language can affect our use of other senses, which is beautiful. And the next one is the flow of sounds, the melodies of song, the rhythm of knowledge, the grammar of dance. Uh, this is about the ways in which these elements can be used to convey knowledge and express ideas. And if the language is lost, and if the traditional language lost, we may not be able to uh, reach this level of uh, knowledge, how to convey uh, ideas and express knowledge. The next one is our laws and, repl and the rhyme replaced by foreign words. This is about the way in which foreign words replace the uh, traditional laws leading to a loss of culture and heritage, their identity and traditions, slaughtered by trends and fates. Um, it provides the uh, how, how traditions were lost to globalization. And then the next one is the, uh, this is the last one. The theme is our humanity and the rim is turned into an infectious wound. So this is about the way in which human beings can be harmed and become dangerous to each other in a world where language and communications are used to manipulate and exploit others. The theme frame structure is evident in many parts of the poem as it is a fundamental aspect of how language works and help organize the information to convey meaning. And finally, teaching focus. The teaching focus for EAP in the context of this poem could be uh, on developing students' ability to use language effectively to express ideas and communicate with others in academic settings. It's for English literature as well, they may analyze something else outside the, the vocabulary beyond the uh, content. And then uh, the grammar and the syntax are how and you know how this writer uh, decide uh, his language choices, probably. So the student could develop an understanding of the grammatical structure and syntax used in an academic writing, uh, such as uh, construction, punctuation, but also it, uh, it allows them to to see different type of genre. Yeah. And then uh, critical thinking and analysis. So students could learn to analyze and interpret academic texts to evaluate argument. Maybe they can use this uh, this poem to, to support their arguments about historical 
And the next one is culture and historical context. So students could learn about the culture in which language has evolved and how languages inter intertwine with the culture, history, and society. It's, it's really important. And overall, EAP instruction in the context of this form could aim to help students develop the language skills they need to succeed academically while also fostering an appreciation for the complex and dynamic nature of language in the form of a poem. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.